Welcome to the Beginner's Guide to the Modern Theory of Polarization, a series of modules to help you understand how the electric polarization is defined, calculated and measured in bulk periodic solids. Brought to you by Schrodinger's Kittens Productions. Since the polarization is a measure of the amount of dipole per unit volume, our goal for this first module is to review the dipole moment of an isolated molecule. So let's start with the simplest possible case of a diatomic molecule consisting of an anion of charge minus Q bonded to a cation of charge plus Q with bond length D and we'll orient it along the z-axis. Remember that the dipole moment, we'll call it P, points from negative to positive charge, so in this case it points along plus z. And using the simple definition of dipole moment being the product of the size of the charge times the distance between the two charges, we obtain P is equal to Q times D. Of course, in general, things can be more complicated. For example, if there are more than two ions in the molecule, and we should calculate the dipole moment by summing over all the charges on the ions times their positions. Let's do that for our simple diatomic molecule. And first we'll take the anion on the left to be at the position Z is equal to zero. Then our dipole moment is given by the charge on the anion minus Q multiplied by its position zero plus the charge on the cation plus Q times its position Z is equal to D, which reduces to Q times D as expected. If we repeat the procedure, but this time we take the origin to be at the cation, then P is equal to minus Q times minus D plus plus Q times zero, which again is equal to Q times D. We can choose a more complicated origin, such as the point marked by the black cross, which is delta Z in the negative Z direction from the anion and delta X in the negative X direction from the whole molecule. Then P is equal to minus Q times delta Z plus minus Q times delta X plus plus Q times delta Z plus D plus plus Q times delta X. The terms in X cancel out, as do the terms with delta Z again giving us Q times D. So we can conclude that the dipole moment of a molecule is given by the sum of the charges on the ions times their positions, at least in the limit in which we can think of the molecule as being made of localized ions. Of course, in a real molecule, the electrons are busy doing chemistry and are very much not point charges. And so a better description sums over the nuclear charges, Q sub n, and integrates over the cloud of electron charge density, Q sub e. And the second conclusion that we can make is that the dipole moment of a molecule is independent of the origin we choose when we calculate it. Although here, we have to give a disclaimer, which is that this is only true when the molecule is not charged. So this leads us to our first exercise, which is to repeat the calculations that we made for the dipole, but for this molecule, in which the anion has charge minus 2q and the cation has charge plus q. You should notice something interesting both about the molecule and about your answer in this case. In the second exercise for this module, you'll use the formula P is equal to Q times D to calculate the effective charges on the ions in two familiar diatomic, diatomic molecules, hydrogen fluoride and hydrogen chloride, using the data given here. Think about whether your answers are consistent with your understanding of ionicity and electronegativity and the relative positions of fluorine and chlorine in the periodic table. When you're happy with your answers, come back and join us for module two in the series, when we'll make a bulk periodic crystal out of our molecule and look at what trouble that causes us. Thanks for listening.